Hi, my name is Magna Nordahl. I'm a captain instructor on ATR aircraft. In this video, we will have a look at the overhead panel in the cockpit of the ATR. Despite the first ATR was built more than 35 years ago, and there are many versions of the aircraft, the overhead panel remains the same, with a few exemptions. The overhead panel is arranged in four rows. Starting with the lower part of the first row, we have the panel for the flight compartment lights. The dome lights are the main lights in the cockpit. This switch is for the internal light in the standby compass. The storm light illuminates the central instrument panel with a bright light. It's intended to be used in darkness to prevent being blinded by lightning flash. It's also useful when we prepare the cockpit before departure. The Captain Viper selector has two speeds, slow and fast. For joke, we call it slow and extra slow. Slow is useful for taxi, and fast is useful for flight, including takeoff and landing. When you select the Viper off, it will return to the parked position. The minimum cabin light provides some light in the cabin in case the aircraft is powered by battery alone. This is useful after engine shutdown and external power is not available. It is also used for emergency evacuation. The attendant call allows the pilot to call to the cabin crew and vice versa. The mechanic call activates a horn in the nose gear bay to catch the attention from the ground crew. If the aircraft is equipped with self call, then the panel looks like this. The fuel panel controls the electric fuel pumps and fuel cross feed. They are caution lights for low fuel pressure to the engine. The LP valve is always open unless the fire handle is pulled. The 500 variants have a temperature indicator that shows the fuel temperature in the left feeder tank. On earlier variants, the temperature indicator is on the central instrument panel. And on the 600, it's on the MFD engine secondary page. The doors panel shows amber lights when the associated doors are open. This includes the emergency hatch in the cockpit and a maintenance panel in the nose gear bay. The test push button acts on micro switches in the cabin door and the service door, but only when they are open. The landing gear has two independent indicators. This is the secondary indicator. The green triangle means that the gear is down and locked. The red light means that the gear is in transit and not locked. No lights at all means it's up and locked. The spoil indicator illuminates when the associated spoiler is extended. The indicator is blue on variants with EFIS cockpit and green on variants with glass cockpit. The reason why they changed the color is that blue color indicates manual operation and green color indicates automatic operation. The spoiler follows the movement of the aileron, which is manual, but the spoiler is automatic. Therefore, green is more correct than blue. TLU means travel limitation unit and restricts rudder deflection at high speeds. If the TLU fails, it can be operated manually with this guarded switch. ATA42-300 and 320 do not have TLU. Neither do they have MFC. MFC stands for multifunction computer. It has four modules, one A, one B, 2A and 2B, and each has an on-off push button with a fault indication. This empty place is reserved for the cell call control panel when it's installed. And at the top we have the engine number one fire panel. The fire handle illuminates red when a fire is detected. A fire is detected when two heat sensing wires in the engine compartment, called loops, sense a fire. If only one loop senses a fire, then a fault light is triggered. The faulty loop can be switched off and the remaining loop will work normally. When the fire handle is pulled, two fire extinguisher bottles are armed, showing a squib light in the agent push button. When the push button then is pressed, the associated bottle with the fire extinguishing agent is activated. A discharge light indicates that the bottle is empty. Those functions are tested before every flight.
second column, starting from the bottom, we have the panel for external lights. The beacon lights are on when the propellers are turning. The navigation lights are on when the aircraft is powered. The strobe lights are selected on when you enter the runway before takeoff and remains on until you have left the runway after landing. The logo lights are illuminating the tail fin. We use them when it's dark. The taxi and takeoff light switch is rounded, which makes it easy to recognize without having to look at the panel. For the same reason are the landing light switches shaped like the rounded rectangle. On some aircraft, the taxi takeoff light is located to the right side of the landing lights. The wing light is used when engine number two is running in hotel mode and when flying in icing conditions at night to observe ice accumulation on the wings. Next, we have the propeller brake panel. The propeller brake locks the propeller on engine number two, enabling the engine to drive the DC generator and provide air conditioning when the aircraft is on the ground. Right above, we have the engine start panel. On early ATRs, the panel have this layout. And from the 500 variants on, the panel looks like this. The engine starter is engaged when you push the start push button. The rotary selector switch has position to off, crank, which rotates the engine, and three start positions to start the engine with igniters A, B, or both of them. On early ATRs, the selector has a position for continuous relight, which activates both ignition systems, either manually or when NH drops below a certain value. The 500 variants introduced a fully automatic relight system. The guarded push button for manual ignition shall only be used when called for in the checklist. Next, we have the main electrical panel. It's for the DC and AC constant frequency system. The electrical system is quite complex, with a lot of buses and many alternate routings between them. The panel shows the basic layout of the electrical system. The push buttons for the DC generators are located above the starter push buttons. This makes sense, because the generators act as starters as well. Between is the push button for the external power. The BTC, bus tie contactor, allows the external power or a single generator to power the entire DC and AC system. It is automatic, but can be isolated manually with this guarded push button. The main buses are called DC bus 1 and DC bus 2. This light will illuminate when the associated bus is not powered. This push button allows for switching off the DC service bus and the two utility buses. The batteries are here and they are charged via contactors controlled with those push buttons. Battery charge is shown with this ampere indicator. The indicator is digital in glass cockpit standard 3 onwards. A switch below targets between the emergency battery and the main battery. This is the battery switch. Those arrows are illuminated when the emergency bus and the essential bus are powered by the batteries. When the power supply to the DC standby bus is less than 19.5 volts, an under-voltage light is illuminated. The TRU, Transformer Rectification Unit, when installed, is used in case both DC generators are inoperative. The TRU supplies electrical power from the AC wild frequency system to all important buses that otherwise will have been powered by the batteries. The TRU prevents the batteries from being drained. The inverters supply the AC constant frequency buses. Finally, we have the control panel for the CVR, cockpit voice recorder. The design of the panel depends on the ATR variant. This is the latest version as used in 600 variants. Just ahead of the overhead panel, there's a microphone that records all sounds in the cockpit to the CVR. Third column. First, we have the cabin science panel. The left switch is, depending on aircraft version, for the no smoking sign or the no device sign. The middle switch is for the seatbelt sign. The final switch is for the emergency exit lights. 
When armed, the emergency exit lights will be activated when the DC generators are offline. Therefore, it's important to switch off the emergency lights before we leave the aircraft. The de-icing panel is for engine and airframe de-icing boots. Above is the anti-icing panel, which is for propeller heating, flight controls horn heating and side window heating. There are several variants of the de-icing and anti-icing panels. The latest ATI variants have automatic switching between temperature dependent modes. In the first ATI variants, you have to do the switching manually at specific temperatures. The probe's heating panel provides heating for the P2 tubes, static ports, angle of attack sensors, and temperature sensors. Again, there are several variants of the panel. The windshield heating panel is for the heating of the windshields. AC valve electrical power means AC variable frequency. The system has two generators and two buses, plus a service bus that is not shown on the panel. Just as for the DC system, there is a BTC bus type connector that can be isolated. The hydraulic panel is very informative as it shows which systems are supplied by each one of the blue hydraulic systems, the blue and the green system. The main pumps are powered by AC valve power. As a backup, the blue hydraulic system has an auxiliary pump driven by DC power. The crossfit is used when one main pump is inoperative. In airplanes with airfish cockpit, the on light is white to indicate a non-normal operation. On airplanes with glass cockpit, the on light is blue, which is more correct when we follow the logic of the color coding used by ATR and Airbus. Blue means manual operation. And finally, we have the control panel for the emergency locator transmitter, ELT. The design varies with the airplane variant. This is what you find on the 600. There is a test push button here, but you are not supposed to touch it. The annunciator light switch controls the brightness of the lights in all push buttons and annunciator lights. There are several hundred light bulbs and they are illuminated when you select test. The first officer wiper operates in the same way as the captain's. The air bleed panel has push buttons for the bleed valves and there are also an indicator for the bleed air crossfeed, which only will open on the ground. And when you look carefully, you will find lines pointing to the engine and wing de-icing system, which has the similar indications. The compartment temperature panel starts with the pack valves. The airflow through the pack valves can be increased by selecting high flow with the flow push button. The two rotary knobs are used to adjust the temperature in the flight compartment, or the cockpit, and the cabin. The temperature select push buttons are used to select manual control if the automatic control fails. The temperature indicators show the temperature in the compartment and in the air duct. The switch below is used to toggle between the flight compartment and the cabin. In airplanes with glass cockpit standard 3 onwards, the indicator is digital, which makes it easier to read. The real circulation fans are controlled with those push buttons. The avionics ventilation panel controls the overboard valve and the extract fan. To the right, there is a guarded switch that normally is set to auto. The overboard valve will then open and close in accordance with a specific logic. It can be overridden by selecting the valve to fill open or fill close. The exhaust mode push button has two functions. When activated when the aircraft is parked on the ground, the extract fan will stop and a horn in the nose gear bay is activated. When in flight, the extract fan will stop and the overboard valve will open partially. The oxygen panel has a pressure indicator for the oxygen bottle, which is located behind the captain's seat. The main supply push button opens for oxygen for the flight crew and observer. The pack supply push button can have different functions depending on the passenger oxygen system. In this case we see here, it delivers oxygen to outlets that can be connected to a portable oxygen mask by the cabin crew. The ATR does need automatic masks for the passengers because the aircraft is limited to 25,000 feet 
and can descend to 13,000 feet in less than four minutes in case of a depressurization. But you will need automatic masks when flying over high mountains. In this case, the pack supply push button is guarded. The compartment smoke panel has a push button to test the smoke detectors. The aft smoke detector has two fans, and if the normal fan stops, there's a fault light inside the push button. When the push button is pressed, the alternate fan is activated. This panel can have different layout. For example, some aircraft are equipped with an extra cargo compartment with a smoke detector. Engine number two fire panel is similar to engine number one fire panel. When you look at the layout of the overhead panel, you will notice that many related systems are located next to each other. As I already said, the bleeder and the de-icing panels are located side by side because the de-icing systems are supplied by bleeder. The panels for the probe heating, windshield heating and anti-icing are located below the AC Wild electrical power panel. Most of those systems are powered by AC Wild. AC Wild Base 1 powers ice protection systems on the left side of the aircraft and AC Wild Base 2 powers systems on the right side. Furthermore, the ice protection systems are organized in three levels. Level 1 consists of probe heating and windshield heating, which are always on. Level 2 consists of anti-icing, which is activated when the aircraft is flying in icing conditions. And level 3 is de-icing, which is activated when ice is accumulating on the aircraft. Above the AC valve panel, we have the hydraulics panel. AC valve base 1 powers the blue hydraulic pump and AC valve base 2 powers the green hydraulic pump. Furthermore, the AC valve panel is located next to the main electrical panel. And as I mentioned earlier, the engine start push buttons are just below the push buttons for the associated generator. And finally, you can see that all light switches are located at the lower part of the overhead panel. All in all, this panel is very well organized. That's all for this time. I hope you liked it. Please support my channel by sharing with your friends and by clicking like and subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook and give a donation with PayPal. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day and happy learning.